Okay, so we talked about simple and compo compound interest. Um, we're going to go through some a little bit more advanced concepts, but using the same basic um, basic form, not not same basic format, the same um, basic ingredients um, in order to arrive at uh, some present and future values. So we've got some tables that are at the end of your chapter, um, and if you have if you don't have a physical copy of the book. I'm not sure that these are included in Wiley Plus, so I'm going to make a copy of these and post them online uh, so that you can you can download them yourself and see them. Uh, they will come in quite handy to you. Um, so the tables that are at the back are these tables one through five, and they represent future value of one, present value of one, future value of an ordinary annuity of one, present value of an ordinary annuity of one, present value of an annuity due of one. Let's first talk about the difference between future value and present value. What they're referring to here is what your unknown is. So if you want to know what something is going to be worth in the future, you will use what a single sum is going to be worth in the future, you will use the future value of one table. If you want to know what something is worth now, but you know what it's going to be in the future. So let's say you've got, you know you're going to need $10,000 in five years. You want to know how much you should invest right now if you know when you're going to need it, the amount you're going to need, and the interest rate and how many, how frequently it's compounded. Then you're going to use the present value tables. So future value means you want to know what the future value of something is. You know what the present value is. You don't know what the future value is. A present value table means you know what the future value is, but you don't know what the present value is. Okay, so that's the difference between future and present value. These are the unknowns. We don't know what it's going to be in the future, so we want to find out. We don't know what it's currently worth, so we want to find out. Okay, so that's why, so that's the difference between future and present value. Now, what's an annuity? An annuity is a series of payments. So if I'm going to be receiving a payment of, think about our uh, lottery example, um, I'm going to be receiving $50,000 a year, either at the beginning of the year or the end of the year. I'm going to be receiving that $50,000 and I want to know what it's going to be worth at the end of receiving all those payments. So if it's after 20 years, how much is the accumulated value of those $50,000 payments each year? What's it worth after those 20 years? Same thing for an annuity um, it, for the present value. If you know what it's going to be worth at the end, but you want to know what it, what it is worth right now. So that then you would use the present value for an, annu an ordinary annuity. Now, here we've got present value of an annuity due. What's the difference between an ordinary annuity and an annuity due? Well, I had mentioned that uh, you could receive an annuity at the beginning of the period, or you could receive it at the end of the period. That's the difference between the two. An annuity due is where the payments are either paid or received at the beginning of a period. An ordinary annuity is where the payment is either paid or received at the end of a period. So the way I remember that is that D comes before O. So if it's an annuity due, it comes at the beginning of the period. An ordinary annuity, it comes at the end of the period. That's how I remember it. I don't know how you're going to choose to remember it, um, but that's that's how I, I remember, remember that. So let's take a quick look at these tables. I've got them up here we go. Okay, so this is the present value of one table. This is at the end of your book if you have a physical copy of that book. You'll see over to the left side is the, are the number of periods. These represent the number of compounding periods, not necessarily the number of years. So if you have a, um, let's say it's a 10 year, and this is a single sum. This is not an annuity, it's just a single sum, present value of one. 
So if we want to know how much $10,000, let's put a little sticky here, covering these up with it, $10,000, how much it's worth right now. So we're going to receive uh, $10,000 in, and I'm looking at table 6-2. I'm sorry, I started with the wrong table. Let's start with table 6-1. We'll go on to 6-2. I thought that looked weird. Okay. So this is a future value of one. So let's just say right now we have $10,000. $10,000. And we want to know what it's going to be worth in 10 years if our interest is compounded at 4%. So 10 years and each compounding period is once per year. One time a year compounded. Okay. So what we would do is we would take our 10,000. We'll find how many years it's going to be compounded. It's compounded once a year, so it's 10 periods. So here's the 10. It's at 4%. So we're going to take the 4% and it's 4% annually. We're going to take the 4%, find the factor. This is our future value factor. Factor is 1.48024. We're going to take that factor and we're going to multiply it by our principal. And what we get is $14,802.40. So the future value of our $10,000 at a 4% annual rate compounded annually over 10 years is $14,802.40. Okay, so that very simply that's how, how that works. Now, the next table is our present value table. Okay, we've got the same number of periods here. Over to the left interest rates up at the top. And there are two parts to these interest rates. So now let's just say that we have, we know that we're going to need $10,000 in 10 years. And we can get an interest rate of 4%. Compounded annually. Okay. This factor is going to tell us what we need right now in order to receive that. So we do the same thing, 10 years, number of periods over to the left, compounded once per year, 4%, we find the 4%, come down here, so our factor is 0.67556. We do the same thing, we multiply that by our principal, and what we have, what we come up with is $6,755.60. So if we have $6,755.60 right now, and we can get 4% interest compounded annually, in 10 years, we will have $10,000. We're just essentially going backwards with this. Okay, so that's that generally is how these tables work. The annuity tables are the same. I'm not going to go through these examples until a little bit later. But we've got the number of periods here, and we've got our percentage rate up here as well. Same thing with the present value of an ordinary annuity. Number of periods here. Now, these are the number of compounding periods, not the number of years, but the number of compounding periods, and then the interest rate up at the top, and we do the same thing and the same for the future value of an ordinary annuity, okay? So that's just kind of an introduction to those uh, to those tables. I am going to copy those and post them, uh, post them up on Blackboard, okay? So let's go back to this. So the number of periods, that, that, that part over on the left-hand side, this number of periods, is the number of years times the number of compounding periods per year. So let's take a look at this again. Let's go back to our um, $14,000. All 
or our $10,000, our future value of $10,000. Let's just say, so this is what it was compounded one time per year. Let's say we've got $10,000 now. We're going to do it for, have it for 10 years, 4%, but we're going to compound two times a year. Okay, so remember, the number of periods is going to be the number of years, in our case it's 10, times the number of compounding periods per year. So let's take a look at that. So now, instead of going to the 10, we're going to take 10 times 2 is 20. Now be careful, because we're not going to use 4%. Because we're compounding it twice a year, we're going to have to divide in half that, that interest rate. Okay, so because we're doing it twice a year, if we were doing it once a year, it would be 4%. But we're doing it twice a year. So now we divide that, the number of compounding periods, or we divide the interest rate by the number of compounding periods. We multiply the number of years by the number of compounding periods, and we divide the interest rate by the number of compounding periods. So in this case, we're compounding, we're going to have to take the 2% over 20. So now our factor, come here, is 1.45, I'm sorry, 485, I can't read that very well, 1.4. 8595. Multiply that times the 10,000. Now we have $14,859.50. Simply because we compounded it twice as often, we get an additional, what is that, $57.10 from the same amount of money. Okay? That's how these tables work. Now, the compounding period interest rate, this is our annual rate divided by the number of compounding periods per year. Remember, we did that here. That's the difference between once per year and twice per year. So we took our interest rate and divided it by the, by the, uh, the number of times it's compounded per year. Now, if it was compounded on a... a on a monthly a monthly uh, rate, we, would, we wouldn't be able to use this table. We'd have to use, here's the formula up here again, if you're someone who likes formulas, you can use the formula to figure that out. But all the problems that you have in your homework and elsewhere are going to, you're going to be able to use these tables with those. Okay, so number of periods is the number of years times the number of compounding periods per year. So, for example, once per year, we're going to use one uh, if it was only for one year. Twice per year, two. Four times a year on a quarterly basis, four. Okay, number of the compounding period interest rate, again, if it's annual, we're just going to use that percentage at the top. But if it is less, if it is more frequent than annual, then we're going to have to divide the, uh, divide the number of times the number of compounding periods, I'm sorry, divide the interest rate by the number of compounding periods. So let's take a look here. This is just a snippet that comes out of the table that we just looked at. Okay, so again, periods over here to the left, interest rates up at the top, and then these are our factors that we use. Okay, so again, here is the, um, here is the formula, if you like that. Future value factor, that's the factor that we're looking for, is 1 plus i, i is the interest rate, to the nth power, which is the number of periods of compounding. Okay, so this is why if we have something that doesn't fit into the table, you could use the, um, you can use the equation instead. So here's an example for these tables. Um, if So determine the number of periods by multiplying the number of years by the number of compounding periods. And then we're going to divide the number of the, the interest rate by the number of compounding periods. So don't forget to do that. There are two parts to this. 
Um, when it's compounded more than once a year, there are two parts to this. You're going to multiply the number of um, the number of times per year by the by the number of years to get the number of periods, and you're going to divide the interest rate by the number of compound by the number of compounding periods per year. So here's an example. So 12% annual interest rate over five years. If it's compounded annual, annually, we're going to take that 12% as a decimal, divide it by one is 12. And then the number of years, five times the number of compounding periods, we've got five periods. So we're still going to use the 12% interest rate. We're still going to use the five periods. However, if it's done semi-annually twice a year, then we're going to divide that interest rate by two to take the 6% interest rate. We're going to multiply the number of years by two to get 10 periods. Quarterly, divide the interest rate by four, four times a year, and then multiply the four times the number of years, 20 periods. Monthly, again, if it's a 12% interest rate, divide that by 12, we get a 1% interest rate, and then we're going to take the five, the five years multiply it by 12 compoundings per year to get um, to get 60 periods. So that's very important when you're using those um, when you're using those tables to remember that. All right, so here's another example. Okay. So we've got a 9% interest rate compounded daily. Now this is a daily compounding period here. This provides a 9.42% yield for a $10,000 investment. So here's our interest rate, 9%, okay? On a daily basis, so the total amount would be $942. And this is just kind of showing you how the compounding, and it, this, doesn't come from the, this doesn't come from the tables anywhere. They're just giving you this. What they're doing is showing you that the more frequent the compounding, the higher the interest because we're just, we're, we're getting interest on top of our interest, right? So here, for example, 8%, and if it's only paid once a year, compounded once a year, on that $10,000 investment, it'll be $800. If it's compounded twice a year, 816. Four times a year, 824. Monthly, so 12 times a year, 830, and daily, $833. So you can see that the same amount, that same $10,000, is going to earn you more interest, same same interest rate, 8%, but because it's compounded daily, it's going to earn you more interest than if it were just compounded on an annual basis. Okay, so in a nutshell, this is what we need to know in order to figure out the future value or present value of something. We need to know, these are our variables, we need to know the rate of interest. What's our interest rate? The number of time periods, so that could be in years, right? But if it's multi, if it's compounded quarterly, then we're going to multiply those years by the number of times it's it's um, compounded during the year. So four times a year. We need to know either the future value or the present value. The other one is the unknown. Okay. So, and there are ways that as well, if we know the future value and present value, then we can figure out the number of time periods. And if we know the future value, present value, we can figure out what the rate of interest is. And we're going to go through some of those um, uh, a little bit later on in this chapter. So, but these are the four fun, these are the four fundamental var variables that we need in order to do these calculations. 